Welcome to part 11 of my full commentary on Westwood's 1997 game Blade Runner. This is Jack Everett. And continuing where we left off, the twins here have asked us to go get the DNA information from Tyrell. And we'll find it in the area that I showed you before when we went back here and then went up this ladder. McCoy went up here. And McCoy actually must have been wandering for hours or even days, possibly, because this big open area under here is actually underneath the Tyrell Pyramid. And so we can just go over here and we can click on this guy and hey, yo, stop. he will get mad at us and arrest us and we will end up in jail. So that's probably not what you actually want to do. So <laughs> showing you what to actually do. I just wanted to demonstrate that McCoy can get arrested at certain points in the game. That's the reason why I did that. Because I pretty much avoided every other possible case. Alright, we actually just go in the elevator here, and we're going to end up in this room. And then the final piece of DNA is just sitting on this table. For some reason, probably because at the end of the game, the developers were like, screw it. We don't want to make a new scene just for uh, McCoy to be able to steal it. So now you'll see we have DNA, Tyrell, and we have a full double helix up here. We have all the DNA information. Whoa. Hey, stop! And now this guy will yell at you. And then I don't know how long it takes, but eventually you'll get arrested again. Now, if I went back in there again, I would get arrested. So I'm not going to do that. But let us take a moment to enjoy my favorite screen in the whole game. The massive amounts of e huge empty space under the Tyrell Pyramid. Yeah, something about this scene just brings me comfort. Brings me peace. I don't know what it is. Alright, so now we can go back to the twins. And they are just right over here. And we can give them their DNA information. I think I got what you wanted from Tyrell's office. Check it out, bro. The little man with the big gun did good. A bargain's a bargain. You said you'd give me Guza. It's all right here. Your boss is a real piece of work, let me tell you. Almost as good as Tyrell. Take a look. That probably had something to do with you guys getting fired. Guza had his fingers in as many rancid pies as possible. He was insatiable. He sold police equipment, ripped off criminals, and even killed. And here were documents that proved it all. Depositions, photographs, video discs. It was the complete file on Guza, the dirty cop. Where'd you get this? From Clovis. He told us to hold it for him. Come to think of it, I'm not sure you're supposed to see it. You want to give it back now? Not a chance. Let him have it. Clovis said he was finished with the policeman anyway. All right, and so they gave us the complete file on Guza, the dirty cop. Stick around. I may not be finished with you. And that's all they have to say with us. Now, McCoy needs to call Guza, so he has a few options. We can go back here and just call him on the vid phone. But I didn't know you could do that the first time I played this game. The first couple times I played this game. And I'm going to show you what I did the very first couple times I played this game because I did probably the worst possible thing that you can do. Okay, it's not really the worst possible thing you can do. But we can go all the way back to Taffy Lewis's. Oh, and we can call from there. <laughs> I have to watch this train go over Bob. This is the most annoying screen in the whole game because every time you go in here, that train always goes on the top and it takes forever. And McCoy can't move till that animation's done. All right, but we'll go up here, and you don't have to do this. You can call from the vid phone in Luther and Lance's. I'm just showing you that you can do this. Oh, great! And we got a cop after us. 
All right, so ending the recording, I will show this to you again. All right, so I managed to Taffy Lewis's without getting killed. And I'll show you, we can click on the phone back here, and I thought this is what you had to do the first time I played. And it takes forever to get here. Damn. Oh my gosh, this save game's before I talk to Luther and Lance. Alright, recording off. Alright, and I am back, and I actually talked to Luther and Lance, and also I did a lot of weird things. You'll only see I have no ammo left. I retired Zubin on the way here. <laughs> okay, so let me show you how the phone call works. Yeah. Been messing with people's lives lately? McCoy, where the hell you been? We've been looking all over for you. Yeah? Am I wanted dead or alive? You don't know what you are, kid. You can sell that replicant shit to everybody else, but I ain't buying. If you're so clean, let's put you on the machine. That'll decide once and for all. I'm through listening, Guza. Now it's your turn. I've been doing some investigating on my own. Came across some prime sources. You know what I'm talking about. Those little illegal weapons deals with Ezo. You were raking in the chinion, selling LPD wares to scumbags and reps. Oh, yeah. The department's gonna eat it up when they hear just how deep that corruption goes. That's a load of crap. Let's hope for your sake Bryant and the Brass feel that way when I lay this file on them. Otherwise, it's a one-way ticket to the off-world penal colony, fat man. What do you want, McCoy? Remove the frame, clear my name, and get that guy out of my apartment. I want my life back. I can't do that. You better start finding a way, cuz... I got another call to make. Okay, okay. How do we work this out? We can't talk over the damn phone. The sewers. I know you want to be comfortable, and I figure it's kind of like your second home down there. At the bottom of the old elevator, there's a gate. Past it, there's a chamber. It's got a round platform. Yeah, I know it. Be there. Alone. And you better hold up your end, or Bryant gets it all. Alright, so that is the phone call. And then we have to go all the way back to where that bum was. And McCoy just got retired, which is fine, because I actually wanted to load the game because I had no ammo left. And just show you how to make the call the easy way without putting McCoy in risk of getting shot. You just go up here. And I didn't know this for like the first ten times I played the game. And then you call him from here. Yeah. Now it's the same you, phone you, call, I'm so I'm just gonna skip up, it all. Alright, so, now, the twins are gone, whatever. Now when we go over here, you remember there was this passageway over here that I never went to before. And let's say hi to our little friend here. Let me ask you something. And he has absolutely nothing to say. He's the most irritating guy ever. Alright, so if we go in here, we can talk to Guza. And there are two possible... There's at least two different conversations these guys will have, depending on how much of a rep sympathizer McCoy's been. Out of my apartment? It's cleaner than when you left it. My dog? Yeah, yeah, your pooch is there too. that everything I need to clear me? I gotta tell you, kid. Those inset photos look pretty real. Let me guess. Clovis gave them to you. It must seem pretty gullible, but he sounded on the level. He called you his brother. Said you came down in the moon bus with all of them. He said Tyrell was using you to get inside the LPD. You hadn't been on the job too long, so I thought, maybe. You'd screw with my head? How convenient. You could satisfy your blackmailer and keep me from sniffing around your dirty work at the same time. You're too smart for me, kid. Water under the bridge. You ready to talk trade? I got it all right here. Photos, files, discs, the works. It ain't a pretty sight. You can't blame a guy for trying to better himself. Trying is one thing. 
ripping off speed loaders and selling the shit yourself? Farming out LPD weapons through black marketeers? Torching two pimps who wouldn't pay you off when you were working vice? Hey, those two had it coming. How long did you think it could last? It finally reaches the point where you don't even think about what happened yesterday. Only what's coming to you tomorrow. Twenty years in the job, kid, and nobody was gonna touch me. Helping reps also part of the job? I was gonna whack them myself once the heat was off. Tie up those loose ends. Once I was out of the way. Clovis is still gonna come gunning for me, kid. You and Chris gotta take him down. Then my problems are over. Our problems are over. And we can all live happily ever after. I don't know. A lot has changed. I don't know what I want anymore. That's fine, kid. Just walk away. I knew you didn't have the cojones. Hey, I got you where I want you, don't I? Kid, I'm what they call a survivor. I've crawled through the sickest sludge of hell and lived to tell the tale. I love that line. I'll be around long after they've forgotten that you were ever on the job. I wouldn't bet on it. But I'm tired, kid. I'm ready to turn over a new leaf. I swear to you, everything will be different if we just stick together. Mop this thing up. Come on. What do you say? I see we were right to follow him, Sadiq. Looks that way, man. You might as well give it up, Clovis. You and your people don't have a chance. Alright, I'm gonna pause the game real quick so I can uh, talk about this scene. So you got a couple options here. McCoy can just shoot Guza right now, which I'm not gonna do because I'm still trying to be a real Blade Runner, if possible. It might not be possible at, the, at this point, but if it, if it can happen, I'm gonna try it. But if you shoot Guza, Clovis will love you so much that you're just a hundred percent rep sympathizer you, you'll only be able to get a clovis ending or there's a ending where you retire clovis even though you got a clovis ending but if you had a love interest and you shoot guza here the love interest doesn't matter clovis gets so much disposition with you that all that is left is clovis there's another thing here i'm going to grab a piece of evidence and the piece of evidence that i grab here i missed so many times when I first played the game and I didn't find it till like I played it like 12 times or something but it is there and it is very helpful to have and it is right here we stand a greater chance of success than you lieutenant McCoy and I were just talking about how to get you guys out of your jam so I'm not gonna shoot Guza. we came up with a plan but you gotta show yourself first we, we gotta do this in person <laughs> and if I told you that Sadiq has a pulse rifle trained right at your heart? Without me, you for sure ain't going nowhere. Lieutenant, we have everything we need. And that doesn't include you. Too bad we're becoming such good friends. Whatever is born of mortal birth must be consumed with the earth. The rise from generation free. Then what have I to do with thee? Mm, more poetry. Kiss my ass! So, what shall we do with this detective? He's been so persistent, so it does Sadiq is gonna run by down here. You know what I would do. Perhaps you're right. It's over. All right, let's get out of there. Now, I've heard that you can retire Sadiq right there. But I have tried it a bunch of times, and I have never been able to retire Sadiq right there. So I don't actually think it's possible. All right, so now all we have to do is go back to McCoy's apartment and meet Maggie and see that that guy that was there before is gone. But first, 
we're going to be, we're being chased by Clovis right now. And so when we go through here, there's a reference to the movie. And I'll show you what it is. So I will just uh, save the game real quick. When we go this way, Clovis grabs our You're arm. You're making me very unhappy, old friend. And then you cannot retire Clovis here. I'll show you. Like, if you try to, you will just get killed. Like, it's dead. I don't even have control over the game anymore. And that's it. So. Let's get to the load screen. Whoops. Loaded the wrong game. Alright, so. This is like, just like when You're Roy grabs Deckard's arm in the movie. And so all we can do is run away and then uh, head over to McCoy's apartment. But on the way to McCoy's apartment, you'll also notice there's a door up here. I'll get to what that is later. That's just part of the next act. There's not even any point in going there now. Uh, actually, I'll just show you because it's different in Act uh, 5. So if we go in here, we will see there's just, I don't know what this is, bunch of industrial type stuff and then there's nothing else. It looks cool and all, but there's nothing to do there. Alright, so let's go back to McCoy's apartment and keep your gun out just in case a cop shows up. This next part is like the dumbest part because McCoy's going to have an encounter, but a cop can also just show up and shoot you, and that's really annoying, so just keep your gun out. Tough day, McCoy. You I told you, the that. cop's there. Steel is looking for you. Now, he won't shoot Can't you bright. while you're talking to Gaff, You've been keeping the whole department hopping. but he'll shoot you right after the conversation's done, and it's really you're annoying. You're looking for me too, Gaff? Looking, not killing. I'm in a good mood today. You know you got some interesting neighbors, McCoy. This is like one yeah, of my favorite well, lines, the too interesting neighbors lately. one. You gonna turn yourself in? I'm thinking about it. Think hard. You killed anyone yet? It's like I said before. You retire a human, your career is over. Your life too, maybe. But we don't live forever, do we? Alright, so I just had to point my gun at the cop and he ran away, but it, that is the most annoying thing. But there's two things I want to say about that conversation with Gaff. Number one, he throws in that classic line about, but we don't live forever, do we? That's a nod to the movie. He says that in the movie. And the other thing is, that part where he says, you've got some interesting neighbors, McCoy. I always thought that was the funniest thing, because it's like, McCoy doesn't know any of his neighbors, and he lives in this huge apartment building. I mean, he's on the 88th floor of this building here. And so, like, this is an apartment. Well, maybe one floor per apartment. But, like, there's an apartment here, there's an apartment here. And McCoy doesn't know any of his neighbors. And I personally don't really know my neighbors that well. I guess I know one of them, but the other one I don't really know at all. I've just seen them around. And I'm every a lot of times when I get home from work, I always say to myself, you know, if I happen to have seen my neighbors, like in their driveway or whatever, I'll always say to myself, you know, you've got some interesting neighbors. And then I'll say to myself, yeah, well, I haven't had time to visit lately. <laughs> just like in this game. All right, so I'm actually going to call uh, this episode good just so that we can uh, get the start of the next act as part of... Uh, uh, that episode. But there's two things you can do here. You can go back to McCoy's apartment or you can go to the police department. Now, if you never collected that piece of evidence that I showed you where Guza was killed and you go to the police department, it's basically like a 50% chance if McCoy will get arrested or if the game will continue or not. But if you grab that piece of evidence on the Guza platform, you pretty much are guaranteed not to get arrested. But either way, it doesn't guarantee what happens at the start of the next act. Well, it helps. But I'll explain that when we get to the next episode. So anyway, this has been Jack Everett. And as always, if I missed anything or you saw anything that you're curious about, let me know and in the comments. And this has been Jack Everett. Thanks for watching. We'll talk at you later.